Good evening. Good evening. It is so lovely to be with you. Nice you and the be. last time you and I talked like this was 10 years, 11 years ago when we made our film. As long ago as that? 11 years ago. I can't believe it. I was just before, one year before your 80th birthday. <laughs> and we made the film, I believe. And that's how we started. That's how. And we released that on my 80th birthday. On your 80th birthday, exactly 10 years ago. It was a decade yes. ago, quite right. Amazing. You know, I want to go back to when we first met because I met you in New York when you had come to visit for the Millennium Peace Summit. Yes, you remember yes, that? that was a very important meeting, you know. The United Nations for the first time held this Millennium Peace Conference. Not only political leaders, but religious leaders also. It was, it was unique. Phenomenal. And I presided over the opening plenary mm -hmm. because I've been involved in the interface, as you know, for several decades. Correct. And that was a milestone. The UN never did anything like that again. Although that was, mind you, 21 years ago. And it, it harks back to the beginnings of all this. Because if you, I mean, the first parliament of religion was in 1893. 1893. This was trying to emulate that in yes, a way, yes, you know. Yes. And, and that brought Swami Vivekananda to the world. You, you see, 1893 was a very significant year. Mm. It was the year three people sailed. Mm. Mahatma Gandhi sailed from London to South Africa. Sri Aurobindo sailed from London to Mumbai. Vivekananda sailed from India to America. Three great men were crossing the oceans at the same time. Isn't that extraordinary? Remarkable. The same year. And 1893, of course, it is a miracle that Swami Vivekananda got there at all. First of all, getting there was almost impossible. He wasn't invited. He somehow managed an invitation. Uh, I don't know how he did it. There are lots of stories, but ultimately he got in. And once he got in, he became a sensation. Overnight. Overnight. I mean, when he got up, people were stunned. You know, he brothers and sisters of America. He said. What a great way to open. Nobody had to... ever spoken like that before. <laughs> and, he, you know? and a great speech. In his first speech, he said that I hope that the bell that rings today uh, uh, rings the death knell of all fanaticism intolerance. and intolerance and, and hatred and all and brings in a new era. And he became a sensation whenever he came. He spoke, the, the crowds went berserk. And it's very important because, you know, um, rather, it wasn't only a flash in the pan. He stayed in America for a while. He met a large number of people. He uh, influenced a large number of people. And then he visited America for a second time also. And that meant that he made a sustained impact upon America and began uh, what can only be called a new chapter in the interfaith uh, movement because that is how it grew and then... But there was no such thing before this. There was nothing the idea of an interfaith dialogue as no. such, was there? In fact, there were interfaith wars. Hmm? The whole of human history is full of interfaith wars. The Crusades and, hmm. and you know, the Dharma Yuddhas and the and the jihads and Saladin and all those people, I mean, they were the wars all the time. So it was Politics first, cloaked in religion. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Hmm. And economics. And economics. So th this is the first time that an attempt was made to say, no, let's, hmm. let's get these people together. Let's see what they have to say to each other. Hmm. And uh, it was very successful. And from then, as you know, we've had, I think, eight parliaments hmm. in different continents. We've had it in Cape Town, we've had it in Melbourne, we've had it in... Can Toronto, we've had... You're getting involved in it was with Mrs. Hollister, I believe, With right? Juli Juliet Hollister, who founded the Temple of Understanding. Tell us about that. You see, she's a remarkable American woman. One of those women who have just a single goal to get people together. For peace. So she got Eleanor Roosevelt and she got all sorts of people along with her. And she held a meeting in, in Bombay. Hmm. Juliet was, was, was uh, you know, she was there and... You know, it was love at first sight, if you see what I mean. I mean, you know, because I was so taken and she was so taken with me. And we sort of uh, said, this is an excellent thing. This is something I had always wanted to do because of the Upanishad background, mm. which, as you know, is very uh, inclusive. There's no exclusivity in the Upanishads. But and speaking of the Upanishads, we'll come back to Hollis in mm. a second, but... Swami Vivekananda's message to America was Vedanta, wasn't exactly, it? Exactly, it was the Upanishads. What Vedanta was he talking about? The Vedanta, when you use the term Vedanta, it means the teachings of the Upanishads. 
because we have so many shastras we have the vedas we have the ranikas we have the brahmanas upanishads later we have the the puranas and the gita they are derivative the upanishads are the supreme texts of hinduism and they are the ones that contain all the wisdom they are dialogues by the way the indic civilization is a dialogic civilization all of them hinduism buddhism Between jainism teacher constantly teacher talk not a revelatory way this is a revelation here it is take it or leave it or prophecy it's a, it's a dialogue like rather like the greeks they were also dialogues with those marvelous dialogues of socrates and plato and um, so that is what he taught and the essence of the of the upanishads is first of all the all pervasive divine all pervasive the billions and billions of galaxies that have been that will be that will be be the future everything that exists is suffused with the divine power secondly the, that is the brahman secondly the atman that means the reflection of that divine power in each one of us in every human being in every being actually but human beings are the only ones who are advanced enough to be able to appreciate it then the joining of the atman and the brahman known as yoga the word yoga uh, actually means to join it comes from the same root as the word yoke to join so yoga is joining the atman and the brahman and there are many kinds of yoga not only the physical exercises that go by that name at present which are very good i mean but they are only a very small part of one of the yogas mm. there is the gyan yoga the way of the mind the discrimination between the real and the unreal plato shall we say is way of plato then there is a bhakti yoga which is the way of devotion the way of mother teresa the way of the way of st francis of assisi and the way of st john of the cross and, and the real the bhaktas the people who fell in love with the divine and then there is the bhakarma yoga which is the way of works this is the way of martha rather than the way of mary mary's way was adoration martha was the get working mother teresa and the ramakrishna mission so on. and the fourth is the way of the breath prana which you are so adept at <laughs> so these are four yogas raja yoga joining raja yoga the gyana yoga and it's funny because he wrote about all four all four all four. all four are required you know raja it's not just only one mm. in in the old days you could do with one now you can't you have to integrate you have to integrate but one of the things that uh, he said that really triggered the american imagination was the inherent divinity in every one right exactly what yeah, was his key message in that that was the key message that everybody ultimately if there is a divine in every one then you can't discriminate on the basis of color or religion or caste or sex or sexual preference or anything you cannot discriminate because everybody has a spark of the divine mm. and fanning that spark into the blazing fire of spiritual realization is what uh, our life should be all about and that's what he became an exemplification of in a way and the americans loved that because a he was handsome yeah, and good looking and well spoken he spoke very well hmm. and uh, um, you know uh, and he only lived 39 years that's right a young man when he left remarkable life and when you think about the revolution that he brought about right single handed almost and Everybody not only that in born. india as well with the ramakrishna mission i yes. mean he came back and made swami serve for the first time yes. nobody had ever heard of that before what was his effect on india what did he on india of course india is much bigger so his effect was not so dramatic and immediate as it was in america because for america it was something totally new mm-hmm. nobody had ever told them about this before whereas in india you know we have so many swami but it did have an effect because the ramakrishna mission based i may add on the christian missions i mean they, what they were doing has really begun doing uh, health and education open school service to the poor service, service to the poor man. and when he founded it he said he gave a, a, a message to them atmano mokshartham jagat hitaya cha work for the liberation of your souls but also for the welfare of the humanity mm-hmm. jagat hitaya is powerful message not only one both very important message what was the in your opinion and you can quote from the upanishad if you like what was it about the upanishad that appealed to the boston brahmins to the chicago intellectuals it was the, just the yeah. audacity for, for example the brahman brahme vidram mitam purusad brahma pashya brahma dakshina shotrena adasyodham prasritam brahme vidam vishvamidam varsham 
in front, behind, to the right and the left, everything is the Brahman, everything is divine. I mean, a bold statement. And then, Tejo mayam saguna nirguna madhvitiyam mananda kandam aparajitam aparveyam. That's, that's how, for example, and the bhakti you can do, you can do it to Jesus, you can do it to Shiva, you can do it to Krishna, you can do it to anybody. That's the big point. Not only people who worship Jesus, fine for the Christians, but I worship Shiva. Mm-hmm. So I have every right to worship Shiva. Mm-hmm. And so this, this, this multiple paths to the divine, let me put it in one sentence. The essence of the Vedanta is accepting multiple paths to the divine. And all paths are true. Ultimately. Ultimately. It's just that we are like uh, the <laughs> blind men and the elephant trying to figure it out. In, in a way, yes. Yes. So this interfaith movement that began with 1893, right? The second parliament was held in 1993 in Chicago again. And you were in there? The, and I was there. In the same place where the 1893 one had been held. At the Almost. Art Academy of Chicago, Academy of Chicago. The famous. And then the others were held in other parts of the world. What was that like? To see that, that was very dramatic, I must say. What was the key moments you remember? The key that? moments I remember meeting, for example, Swami Shiva Subramanya. The, have you ever heard of him? No. He has this marvelous ashram in Kauai. Oh, He's yes, one of the, the islands Himalayan of Kauai. Institute, the Himalayan the, Yogi. The Yogi. Mm. The, the, uh, the Hinduism Today, the journal, you know. He's a beautiful place. I, I visited him later. But I saw him, he was very, very impressive. And uh, he, has, you know, he was an American, he was a dancer at one time, but he was very impressive. And then I met a lot of, I met uh, uh, Vilayat Khan, the Sufi teacher, Hazrat Vilayat Khan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's the son of the great Inayat Khan, he's, Vilayat Khan is and still they're carrying very well in America now also. Extremely yeah. well in America, that's a Sufi the move. The Omega move to center. You see, the Sufi is, a, is the softer side of Islam. Correct. Everybody, uh, thinks of Islam in a very sort of very strong and, and rather fanatical way, but this is a softer side. We must accept, understand that. But how did how did Hollister get you involved? You see, Hollister said, "No, no, you must come, you must come." And my wife was with me also, Asha was with me, and she loved both of us. She, you know, and uh, so she. This one I was invited separately by the organizers. Mm. So I. I got into the movement because I was part of the Temple of Understanding. That gave me the key to enter the, I had to be part of some organization. Mm-hmm. I did have an organization of my own called the Virat Hindu Samaj, but that is not well known. So that's how I got it. And from there on. That gave you an international standing. Yes. Mm-hmm. From there on, we took it from there and then we, we had all the other. Did you launch in parts. India as well? Later, much later. Mm-hmm. Now we've launched in India. So. Why do you feel that the interfaith movement seems to be dying now? And what do you think is coming in its place that may give us hope for the future? You see, interestingly enough, I was also in at the birth of the environmental movement. Mm. I was on the Indian delegation led by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi to Stockholm Mm. in 1972. The first United Nations Conference on the Human Environment. That was the beginning, that was the birth of the environmental movement. And I was there. I was in chairman of the Indian Board for Wildlife. I was into that. Now, the environmental movement in some ways has taken over quite a lot of the interface, of the energy of the interface movement. A lot of the interface people getting involved in green work and, you know, but without the spirituality and without some have the spirituality, mysticism. some have the spirituality, some don't. But it's not based on that. So that is one of the reasons why. Do Secondly, you think that was a loss to mankind to lose no, the spiritual component I don't so much? Know. I don't know. It's still there. The other reason, interface is nobody's baby. People will spend millions of dollars to build new churches, new temples, new synagogues, new gurdwaras. But interface is nobody's baby. So we are broke. I mean, the fact of the matter is, the interfaith movement is broke, there's no money in it. And without money, what are we going to do? What, what would Swami Vivekananda say well, if he yeah. saw that? What would he say? <laughs> he raised the money, mind you, for he raised money for, he his, did. for Ramakrishna mission. He did. He did. Yeah. I mean, his vision, I remember because we were working on this film, his vision was that he would teach 
America Vedanta and he would bring American know-how and money to help India to lift India's out of poverty, poverty yes. to remove exactly, poverty. You exactly. know. But what was that? What was that juxtaposition? Did you see? Well, that juxtaposition that? was before he went to America as a as a monk, itinerant monk. He travels throughout India, all the way from the North Kashmir down to Kanyakumari. You remember, he swam and he sat on that rock with his now uh, statue, and he was horrified to see the superstition, the poverty, the misery in which the people of India live. He said, I am going to remove this poverty and I am going to use my interface contacts in order to raise money to help poverty. So, raising money to set up the Ramakrishna mission, which in turn then tries to help the people. Did That's you find open. that you found yourself being drawn to that same kind of thinking later on? Yes, I, I mean less, I must admit. <laughs> I have been less service oriented <laughs> than I should have More known. knowledge. More have been. knowledge. I am a little more theoretical perhaps and you know, I am very good at these interfaith gatherings and at, at art, uh, articulating complex ideas in understandable language. You know. Actually getting down to the grassroots is not my fault but you have other people who are doing it, mind you. A lot of people sure. are doing it. And, um, I think you have done a great job but I tell you something, the, you know, you are now 90 years old, you know, you know. Just a number. You are clearer speaking than most people I know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you look better than most people in their 60s even. <laughs> well, there's Lord Shiva's grace, I would say. That's all I can say. But what is it that you have, you know, I mean, look, a lot of young people watch my channel, a lot of young people talk to me, you know. And I am in the consciousness awakening game. Mm. You know that. I do. That's what I mean. I participated in you. Have, you were the one who launched me in Delhi. Yes, I you know, that. all my early talks I here. That. And now it's gone global, and I'm so grateful for all of that. And I'll never forget you as my mentor for doing <laughs> that. You know, but mm -hmm. what I what I find intriguing is that let's forget all the normal speeches we give and all the things about Upanishads, about this and that. What have you realized now in your 90th year? <laughs> is the nature of human consciousness and what we are supposed to be doing. What do you think? That's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, I think uh, I've realized several things. One is that life is, is not an event, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a movement. It's not a point, it's a constant movement. And so we are constantly moving, physically, psychologically, physiologically and so on. So what we've got to do is we've got to move into a space where we have got over too many of the, you know, in, we don't, we don't have uh, whatever they call, what they call in Christianity, terrible crimes or something, but uh, we, sins. 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 We, uh, we don't have deadly sins, <laughs> but we do have five in Hinduism, calm, krodh, lobe, mo, ahankar. Calm is lust. I would have thought at 90 I should have got over my lust. <laughs> Krodh. Without desire, you cannot wake up in the morning, my friend. <laughs> krodh, 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 anger, lobe, uh, greed, envy, moh, undue attachment, mm. hankar, pride, mm. ego. Ego. I think I have broadly got over the first four. Mm. Ego is still there, my <laughs> dear. But no ego, then no. But not existence. egoism. Mm. You see, but so you the first thing yourself. I think to do is yes, I think to do one has to get over uh, the, the these things. That's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is to realize the complexity of human behavior mm. and the diversity of human consciousness, mm. and not to try and put people into straight jackets. Mm. This is this tolerance, is openness, tolerance, openness uh, live and let live. Yes, live and let live, and uh, respect alternative lifestyles and life modes. I think that, that, you know, one of the, you know, my own journey to this work has been as a consciousness seeker rather than a religious pursuit. It was really? never a religious thing for me. No. I don't think I had a religious bone in my body, really speaking. But what I did discover was that in meeting so many gurus and swamis and all of this is that... And you met a lot of them. I met a lot and I made films on them and I talked to them and I spent a lot of... And I looked under the hood also. 
you know, as you have done, because you have also had many teachers, mm. you know. Many. In fact, I followed in your footsteps, you know. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not going to have one yes, yes. focus I'm a, I'm a guru. Multiple guru, I'm going to have I'm many a multiple teachers. Guru, man. And I have to be my own inner guru has to wake up. Ultimately. Some, ultimately. So when you think about the inner guru, right, what is your inner guru telling you in your 90th year? For you, for your consciousness. Chare beti, chare beti, move on, move on. Never stop. Never stop. A rolling stock. A rolling but you know, the, 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 there's a poem by Francis Thompson. Mm. Not where the wheeling systems darken and our benumbed conceiving souls, the drift of pinions would we hearken, beats at our own clay shuttered doors. The angels keep their ancient places, turn but a stone and start a wing. Tis ye, tis your estranged faces that miss the many splendid thing. Oh. The many splendid light of the Atman. The light that lighteth every and man that comes into the world. And you can see it in every face world. you meet, in every action you yes. do, in every thought and you every have. Every religion, the light that lighteth every man that comes into the world, the Bible, Bible says. Mm. The Quran, see, the, the Sufis speak of the nur mm. mm. The Sikhs speak of the Ek Omkar. That, 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 that shining light that shine at the source light. of and everything. The Hindus say, Vedaham etam purusham mahantam aditya varanam tamasaparastat. I have seen that great being shining like a thousand suns beyond the darkness. You know, I call my academy a thousand suns. You, you called it? That? Yes. You took it from my your academy opinion. is a thousand suns academy. I can't believe it. <laughs> it is. I call it a thousand suns. That is the corporation we have set up and the company and the organization. Really? I didn't know that. And the media that. company that's going to show all this is I a thousand suns. I never knew that. Uh, it's called a uh, thousand uh, suns academy. <laughs> it is, it's very so I have to tell you that... that uh, you gave me hope in a world full of dogma and ego and creed and madness everywhere I looked, you know, when I came to India, because I came to India 14 years ago, yeah. and you know I'm leaving now. No, you're going right? back. I'm going back to the States. But when I came and I met all these gurus and swamis, I also saw beautiful wisdom but ego and crushing other people and devotional dominance and things. I couldn't believe that an intolerance towards different things, whether it be, you know, sexuality or, you know, food or whatever. It's like so many no's and do's and don'ts, you know, in this culture. And I found just, I had to, I think coming to you was like taking a bath each time in this, in this <laughs> toxic you. world. It was yeah. like that, you know. Maybe, uh, but I enjoyed our salons together. Let you know. What we had a lot of salons. Best part. Maybe because you know, I never got stuck in any particular. I am an Upanishadic man, mm. but Upanishads themselves mean "ano bhadra katavyantu vishvadagi." Let lower thoughts come to us from every side. Mm. Let them come. Let those thoughts. That come. is the beauty. Don't be afraid. Don't think any. I got you know what will happen to me. No, be be confident. And be prepared to accept whatever comes. And the other thing I saw about you, which I always admired, was that you never spoke ill of others. You, you may criticize, but you will never speak ill in the bad karmic way. You know this... I, I know the, what the, I the, mean. The, that yeah. ego speaking that occurs in human society. Right? Yes. You have always retained a kind of positive mental attitude, which I've learned from. And yes, you. I think that's you know. tremendously important, Radha. You know, once you get into a negative situation, then you tend to get into a, a negative spiral. Mm. It's very easy to get into a negative spiral. Mm. You know, remember one thing, the Yuga Dharma or right, the Zait guys, the spirit of the times is downwards. So we have to go against it's the pulling current. pulling you down. Pulling down, that's all over the world. What why is that demi-urge pulling us down? What is the why? philosophy? That's what, the way, what do you think that's it is a, in human nature that keeps us going back to that nature? That's the way, if you look look at the children's graves that they are finding in Canada. I, know. I mean, can, can, you go, can found, anything be worse than that? And this is supposed to be an advanced be society. Natives who and, and this society is supposed to be an advanced society Catholics. and a democracy. And, you know, what, what is this? What is it? What is it in human nature that leads one to the most terrible deeds? And, Horrible things and look what's happening around the world even today. I mean, those children's graves really got that's me. That's shocking. I mean, that's, that, that's, you know. So, you know. You have to stay it? positive. So, therefore, I say that is a demiurge, as you may say. That's the spirit of the times. Uh, and uh, the zeitgeist, as the mm, Germans mm, put it. Mm. And therefore, in order to. 
Alice in Wonderland had a wonderful line which Jawaharlal Nehru often called, quoted, we have to run as fast as we can to stay where we are. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a good one? I like that one. I like that one. So, because that is, yeah, because yeah. if we let's stop running, we, we go, we backwards. go backwards. We start going backwards. <laughs> it's very really easy to go backwards, you know. It really is. No, I mean we're watching it now. Look at America. Look at India. The 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 desire oh. to just regress into negativity and, mm. and hatred is so strong. It's so strong. So that is why to answer your question, there's something in human nature which is negative. Mm. And um, that negativity, we have Always to fighting that. we have to fight. We have to work, go in the opposite direction. Well, you spend a lifetime fighting that. Try what to, I can see. Try to. You know, good I for you. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think? Let's talk about your consciousness now, right? Because you know, I am obsessed with consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. whether it's through Kundalini or through Turiya and Trika or neuroscience, I'm looking at it always in that open-minded way, and. Now that you're coming to your 90th year, right? I passed my 90th year. Yes. 91st year in action. The 10th decade. 10th decade in action. <laughs> May you live 100 years. You know, that is like. what they say. Jeevayama Shatata Shatam. That is the Upanishadic prayer. That's right. May you live for 100 years. May you rise for 100 years. May you hear for 100 years. May you speak for 100 years. Really? You know, it's all there, yes. So only 10 years, not that long. You can do it. I expect I, to see you every year when I come I back here, that. you know. But one I thing know. I wanted to ask you is that all your experiences with Swami, Muktananda, all the rishis you have met, all the saints you have met, the Dalai Lama, you have seen, you have met almost every religious and spiritual leader you can imagine in this last three ages of 50, 60 years of yes, active life, yes. right? You have met them, you have met them all. What is the conclusion you have come to about consciousness and the afterlife and what happens when we... Well, you see, the, there are two different things. First of all, I have met a number of people. Mm. And if you were to ask me who is the most remarkable person mm. you've met, mm. it would be Sri Krishna Prem. Okay. The Englishman. Tell us about him. Why did he you... was an English pilot who, in the First World War, who had some kind of an experience there and he came to India uh, as a professor of, of English in in the Lucknow University and from there he suddenly he met the wife of the Vice Chancellor, saintly lady. She became his guru. He ultimately developed this thing for Krishna and for Hinduism and finally he converted, he became a monk hmm. and he, when his guru left to set up an ashram in Mirtola, hmm. which is just beyond Almora in North India, uh, he was there too. But so you that, spent many, many That is Mirtola. There. Uh, is a lovely Krishna ashram. And when I went there in 56, 57 for the first time. That early? That early. Wow. He and Ashishta, another English disciple, there were the only two people there. And he was the most extraordinary. His books, the Yoga of the Kathopanishad and the Yoga of the Bhagavad Gita, mm. are Profound. marvelous books. They are really profound. And he had studied Theosophy yes. and theosophy other things and as all well. And Helmist, Trimagestis and Meister Eckhart and all those. He was well versed in the very well philosophical versed. system. And, and he was a person, therefore, he could cover across mm. these worlds. This is what I admire. And that is that. extraordinary. And that I think I've learned from him mm. a lot. And I've learned from you. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, the second thing that you talk about the afterlife, frankly, that has never interested me. A lot of people are obsessed with the afterlife. Mm. I know one, who is it? Somebody I know. Where do we go? I said, look, forget it. You can't, you can't do anything about it. When you die, you'll find out. <laughs> so, you know, there's no... I know people do all sorts of speculations and there are all sorts of things. And I am a worshipper of Shiva. Tell us about Shiva that. is the Lord of, Lord of life and the Lord of death. He is the Mahakaleshwara, mm -hmm. the great Lord, the Ujjain temple. And so, it is his decision, not mine. I'm, I'm ready. Whenever he says, come out, buddy, I'm off. <laughs> so, I'm not neither worried. Nor am I in any way negativity. I, I feel that whenever he feels it's time, he'll take the decision, not me. I can't take that decision. It has to be taken by him. You, you've been a karma yogi. You've been a bhakt also, right? You've been a raj, some raja yoga. Some raja, some jnana raja yoga. yoga. Also. Jnana yoga, definitely. Raja yoga is the weakest Jnana yoga, yoga, you did Upanishad. The raja yoga, the raja yoga has been the weakest, weakest, one. The weakest <laughs> one. That is you. You, instead of helping me, you're helping all these chefs on... on I tried to help you. No, no, no. You, 
you were going to leave <laughs> India without getting my Kundalini around. I, I tried to bad. stir it up for you. I tried to stir it up for you. But you see, the thing is that someone like you, your consciousness already expanded to such a degree that you think you're not awake, but you're awake. No, I'm not, well, I'm awake in some sense, but I have no, no idea. because there's nothing that says that I'm a man of the world, I'm a man of materialism, I'm a man of my, my love of creative and beauty and things like that, that stops you from being conscious, you know. There's nothing. It's part of consciousness it, it, In fact, I feel sorry for those who don't know how to enjoy beauty and good food and good company and, good and poetry. good poetry and, and I love music. Urdu poetry. You love, uh, please. You are the one who has been waiting for the night. You are the one who has been waiting for the night. You are the one who has been waiting for the night. You are the one who has been waiting for the night. Beautiful. Faiz Ahmed Faiz, Pakistan. Beautiful. وہ بات سارے فسانے میں جس کا ذکر رہنا تھا وہ بات ان کو بہت ناگوار گزری ہے اور فضا کے ہاتھوں گھروں پر نہ جانے کیا گزری چمن سے آج صبا بے قرار گزری واہ واہ نہ گل کھلے ہیں نہ ان سے ملے نہ میں پی ہے عجیب رنگ میں اب کے باہر گزری دا فلاورز ہیو ناٹ بلوم آئی ناٹ میٹ مائی لو اور گل کھلے آئی ناٹ ہیڈ مائی وائن Strange way the spring has passed. <laughs> because I'm intoxicated <laughs> by the divine. <laughs> so, I, I think know. that is what, what I love. And, and one thing we never talked about before, you and I should spend time later on this, is that, you know, I've been studying the deeper aspects of Kashmir Shaivism. Oh, yes. You know, in Trika. And, and I read in depth the uh, Pratyabhigna, Vigyan Bhairam Tantra. Yes, 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 yes. you know, a lot of reading you've done. Beautiful teachings. Now, that came out of Kashmir. Yeah. Now Kashmir at some point gave us the Buddhist conference that gave us Mahayana Buddhism. Indeed. Gave us Kanishka. Kashmir Shaivism. Yes. Gave us Shiva Sutras. Gave us Abhinav Gupta. Gave us so much profound wisdom. Right. And then all that gets crushed. It's a tragedy because 12th of the... century. Right. 12th century onwards. Crushed. Crushed completely. In fact, thank God Lakshman Ju and others... Well, when the Dogras came in, when our family came in, we tried to, you know, because previously it was all non-Hindu rulers. That's right. Uh, when we came in for the first time, it was the revival of Hindu rule after 700 years, mm -hmm. 800 years. What year was that? This was your uh, uh, eight, 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 1846. 1846. We set up a state mm -hmm. and ruled it for a full century till 1947. Who was the, your father? Maharaja Gulab Singh. Gulab Singh. And he, he was also it. very famous for supporting the Theosophical Society. Fact, he was in touch with HPB. And he helped finance them and supported yes, them. Yes, and Mahaja Rambir Singh, his son came. also. What a man. So the thing is that, at that after that we tried to bring up, bring back the Gilgit manuscripts for example, mm -hmm. which tell us about the Shiv Sutras, would have been lost. It's only under Dogra rule that we were able to get them out and get them published. And Wonderful. All. The but Kashmir Sage of Texas. Thank God. Then you got Lakshman Ju was a living example of Kashmir Shaivism. Mm -hmm. I knew him so well. Mm. I can still see him in his tall man with a robe. And, and such Swami Muktananda was also your teacher. And Muktananda right? also was a teacher. He was a Kashmir Shaivism expert as well. So I, but I have not studied Kashmir Shaivism, unfortunately. No, no. Because it's an extremely complex, and as you say, it's a very, it's a very profound. But it's a world by itself. You know, you've got to really go into it. You've been into. It. I don't know how you've managed to read it. I am loving and enjoying it because. It transcends, you know, they, they talk about a very interesting thing and we can, mm. I want to talk about it with you. They talk about the three main opayas that human beings have, right? They talk about anavopaya, which is the path of the ordinary man, the atom, which is bhakti and devotion and mantra and puja and church and temple, which is for the ordinary man, mm. right? The, the person who can't even begin to meditate, right? That person. Then they have something called shaktopaya, which is the path of meditation, of inner contemplation, antar mukha, looking out, seeing it in the world, you know, being in within, concentration, dhyana, this dhyana idea from yoga, yes. right? Then the third one, they call sambhavopaya. And sambhavopaya is that I see Shiva in everything. Mm. I look at nature, Shiva, I see you, Shiva. I see Shiva in everything, right? That's the final. And then, no, the final one is the beautiful one. And this is where you are coming to now, which is Annopaya, which is Pratyabhigna. That means I am, am Shiva. 
That is a very big leap. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see what you show him, show him. Show him, show him. You know, the whole self-recognition of the world has been revolved around show him, show him. So, what is your? Tell us about your love affair with Shiva. Why did Shiva well, become know. such a powerful force in your life? You see, for thirty-five years, I was worshiping Krishna, mm. and then a certain event occurred, which I I am not in a position really to to reveal. Mm. That changed my consciousness. A, a mystical experience. A mystical experience. I uh, uh, a mystical experience, definitely yes. yes. And, uh, and where you perceived a kind of Shiva where where uh, where I I found myself as part of the dance of Shiva. I no longer existed. Mm. My body had disappeared. Mm. The emotions had disappeared, but the mind was still there, and I was dancing to that. Brahmananda, Muktananda, that Muktananda beach, you know, it was on there. <laughs> Brahma Swarupa, Neel, Varam, Triloki Natham, Jai Guru Devam, Om Naman, Mukta, Shiva Anandam. Yeah. That went on. So that was that was an extraordinary. That was the dance of Shiva. Hmm. That was the dance of Shiva. So for that particular, those few hours, I participated in the dance. You transcended this reality It, totally. And that was a, a changing mind, changing thing. I didn't immediately change, but within a few months, I had moved on to Shiva. But I can understand that because for someone like you, who has lived their entire lives in the mind, this kind of consciousness would appeal because Krishna requires you to devote yourself in bhakti mm. and heart. Mm. And, but Shiva consciousness is pure mind, mm. you know. Transcending the. So tatwas, once I got onto that, I am obsessed with the Nataraja. Yes. The so-called dancing. You built how many Nataraja temples? I built now? three temples. Three temples. One in North Carolina, and yes. a beautiful. Uh, I will visit it this time. Uh, you, you must visit it. A community in Yogaville. Okay, I've it's heard of it. It's a lovely it. community. It's a beautiful interface uh, temple. The really only interface temple that I've seen. And then there's this, thing, and then on top of the hill, this Shiva that I donated. In Who a, was the, in the a Swami there? Swami Muktananda. Muktananda. And uh, he was the one who built this. Mm. And you inaugurated Shiva, it. Shiva, I know, I donated you the gave Shiva. The I gave the Shiva. And he built a glass temple, uh, in which it rotates. <laughs> Actually, it's on rotating. Like, like dancing with the universe. Dancing with the universe. Never stopping. Remember yes, what you said yes, earlier. Yes, yes. Not, you should never stop. You keep running. <laughs> and so that was one. That was. Uh, Where are the other two? The other two are uh, one is in Jammu. Jammu. In the in my Raghunath Temple complex, and one is in Pondicherry. I've been there. Very good. The That's a, the only pyramid, pyramid. Only pyramid temple in the world. <laughs> Very powerful Pondicherry. acoustics and feeling in there. Yes. Very. I powerful. tried to combine the great artifact of the Egyptians, the mm. pyramid, small pyramid, with the Nataraja, the greatest uh, artifact of the mm. Hindus. And that combination is becomes. I took powerful. my students on a journey to South India in uh, mm -hmm. 2019 October, and we went to Chidambaram, and we great. saw the Nataraja mm -hmm. there. What a that is where it began. And we saw the Arti, and what power! That is that is where power. it began. Eh? Chidambaram is where the Shiva Nataraja right. puja began. That's right. That's right. It's the Nataraja Shura temple. But it seems a much more ancient it's metaphor. Very ancient. Very ancient. You know. You see, it, this is it. It's a. It's a. Kinetic image. Mm. Most images are static. You mm. know, this one moving. It's like the universe, which is constantly moving, not static. And it has everything. It has the creation with the drum. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And word was God, and the other the fire, which is ultimately the Big the Bang. Big But if there was only those two, then where do we fit in? Other two hands. This one, fear not. And, that is and this one Abhaya. pointing to his. Abhaya this is a bear, a bhaya bhaya And the other one pointing to his upturned leg. This is the way. And there's the dwarf the beneath way. the leg. And that is egoism. The dwarf. The dwarf. The dwarf. So when they write your epitaph, they're going to say, <laughs> "He never stopped moving." <laughs> Actually, Jyoti Jyoti has made a film on me, okay. which is called Karan Singh, a Pilgrim Soul, <laughs> and this comes from that uh, lovely poem. Yes, please. By by Yeats. When you are old and grey and full of sleep and nodding by the fire, take down this book and slowly read and dream of the soft look your eyes had once and of their shadows deep. How many loved your beauty with, how many loved your moments of glad grace, and loved your beauty with love false or true, 
but one man loved the pilgrim soul in you and loved the sorrows of your changing face and bending down beside the glowing bars murmured a little sadly how it fled and paced upon the mountains overhead and hid his face amid a crowd of stars what a beautiful you and what you know, we thought you know i give you goosebumps give you goosebumps you know the pilgrim soul she took it from there will will i think that was a perfect place to end our dialogue well, it's been lovely you talking know, to I you it was wonderful that. i love talking uh, to you i love you talking know, to you and great. i'm so glad that you I, found your association with me to be of use no, at that particular I think, moment i don't think it's a use i think it was a blessing <laughs> in a world of 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 ego to just have a chance to sit and every talk. every sunday we would sit and just talk philosophy yes, and yes. life and i science. enjoyed those i enjoyed it those some wonderful journey 14 years passed 14 by years nicely for me thank god our friend yeah. munish joined us sometimes yes yes and the three of us would just sit and talk about anything that we sort of felt wonderful it was lovely wonderful. i enjoyed them i remember them. 